63 on the math subject, practice GRE test. Um, if you know what SUP and INF are, uh, you probably can answer this question. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, SUP is short for supremum, uh, which is the least upper bound. And INF is short for infimum. I think that's how you say that, which is short for the greatest upper, greatest lower bound. Uh, so for example, if my set A is all the numbers from 0 to 1, then my sub would be equal to 1 and my inf would be equal to 1. Because this is the smallest number so that every single number in this set is less than this number. And this is, whoops, and this is the largest number so that every number in this set is greater than that. And note that if I change this a little bit, I would have the same sub and the same inf. And so I guess I shouldn't have said smaller than, uh, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Anyways, there's sup and inf. What we're doing is we're taking these two sets A and B and they have real numbers in them. Um, and A times B we're defining, or A dot B we're defining as the set containing all of the X, Y products so that X comes from A and Y comes from B. And we're told that A and B are non-empty bounded sets of the real numbers and sup A is greater than sup B. And then we're asked, what is sub A times B? Well, okay, think about how you can make elements of this set as large as possible. And you're like, oh, that's easy. Just take the largest element from A and multiply it by the largest element from B. And I guess really they don't even need to be in those sets. Maybe I take the supremum uh, of A and multiply that by the supremum of B. Yeah, that will work unless um, your sets contain negative numbers, that might not work. So I guess what I'm saying is if all elements are positive in both sets, then this will certainly be my answer. If all elements are negative in both sets, then I don't want the supremum of each of them, right? If my set contains all the numbers from negative four to negative two, I don't want negative two, I want the negative four. So just in case they're negative, and the reason I want the negative four is because if I multiply together two negative numbers, then I can get a positive. So in case all the elements in both sets are negative, I'd want inf A and inf B. I'd want that product right there. So that's gonna eliminate a lot of choices. Um, it ain't that, because it, we don't know which of these two it will end up being. It depends on the sets A and B. It ain't that, I don't know where the hell that came from. It's certainly not that. Um, this guy has sub A, sub B, inf A, inf B, so that might be the answer. Sub A, sub B, Sup A, inf B, no, ain't that. Uh, sup A, sup B, inf A, inf, sup B, inf A, inf, oh, okay. So this one has the two that I'm talking about, and this one has the two that I'm talking about. So now I'm like, okay, uh, I'm down to either C or E as my final answer. The question is, can I define some other set so that this would be, would represent the supremum of the set? Uh, I think I can, and the way I could get there is think, what if one of these sets only contains positive numbers and the only one only con contains negative numbers? So up here, they both only contain positive numbers. Down here, they only contain negative numbers. But what if one contains only positive and one contains only negative? And I realize I'm not considering all of the cases here. I just want to come up with one case where this would be the answer so I can show that E is the correct answer. So what if that were the case? Well, which set would contain only positive and which would contain only negative? Because the supremum of A is greater than the supremum of B, supremum of A, so A would have to be contain only positive numbers and B would contain only negative numbers. If that were the case, then this would contain only negative numbers because anytime I multiply together a positive and a negative, I get a negative. So really my goal here, if I'm looking at the supremum, is kind of trying to be as little negative as possible. So I want the absolute value of this thing to be as small as possible. It's a given that it's going to end up being a negative number. It's just how can I make the absolute value as small as possible? Well, to make the absolute value as small as possible, I'd want this to have a small absolute value. So I'd be looking at the infimum of A. And I'd want this to have the smallest possible absolute value. So I'd look at the supremum of B. Right? The largest number that is negative will be the least negative is the way to think about it. So if I'm in this case, this would be my answer. That's exactly this. I haven't considered all possibilities for A and B. 
But just by looking at these three possibilities, I've managed to rule out A, B, C, and D here, so my answer must be 